Hello and welcome to another Hand Drink Solar Wine Info video. Today we are exploring the Bosch and Doll Playpen Reasoning 2016. Only about 7,000 bottles of this particular wine was made and it's not available for retail. Instead, it was reserved to be sold through selected restaurants and wine bar clients. So I was very stoked to have gotten an allocation of this for the club. The wine was made by Ezel Harbo, who is the winemaker for Org Dirac up in the Piquet Berg in the very northern uh, area of the Swartland, and they focus on certified organic wines. But in 2016, obviously, Ezel was in fact one of the winemakers at Boschendal. Perhaps more importantly, Ezel spent some of her early career gaining experience in Alsace, which is known for its full, rich, rounded, dry reasonings. And so it should be no surprise that today what we're drinking is a full, fairly rich, round, dry Riesling. I'm going to start talking a little bit about the global profile of Riesling, and then after that we'll get onto what it actually tastes like in the glass. As per usual, you can skip around and watch it in whatever order you want by clicking on the chapter markers in the timeline below. Riesling is a German thing, right? It's considered one of the noble grapes, and like Chardonnay and Chenin Blanc and even Petit Verdot, it has one of its parents being Gouet Blanc. Now, you may never have actually drunk any Gouet Blanc, but you owe it a huge debt of gratitude, nevertheless, for having spawned some of the grapes that we love most. And in case you wanted to be contrarian and try and claim Riesling for any other country other than Germany, ampelographers tell us that Riesling originally came from the Rhine Valley in Germany. Of course, there are prominent plantings outside of Germany. In the United States, both on the east and west coast, there's a lot of Riesling plantings, especially up near the Finger Lakes area in the top right-hand corner of the United States. And then Australia, the Eden and Clare Valley have developed their own pretty distinct style of dry Riesling. But as I say, compared to Germany, it's pretty small fry. Now in South Africa, it is the 16th most planted white cultivar. So not super dominant, it's kind of just ahead of Palomino and just behind Uni Blanc, which is also known as Trebbiano in Italy. In South Africa, there are only 125 hectares of Riesling out of the 90,000 that's in the national vineyard. And 30% of that is in Stellenbosch, which is exactly where this guy comes from. But okay, enough context. Let's see what this guy smells like. The thing with Riesling is that depending on ripeness and sweetness, it can present as in a whole bunch of different guises. It can go from area from being super lean and lemons and limes through to perhaps uh, peach or apricot or even pineapple. And as I said, this can all change depending on how it's vinified. What's so beautiful about this is that it manages to express pretty much all of those. You've got a little bit of lemon and lime, you've got a little bit of apricot, some pineapple. But then what's most interesting is this little note of kerosene. And you might say, Han, what the hell is that? Well, for those of you who uh, lived in a time before we cared about the environment, you can think back to what they used to paint to seal wooden construction poles. It was a brown sticky liquid called creosote. Uh, and creosote is not unlike kerosene in its aroma. So as I say, for those of you old enough, that might be what you want to call it. But the technical term is kerosene. Now here's the interesting thing about kerosene. The chemical that triggers this sensation for us of kerosene is a very long and boring name that has absolutely zero practical applications. I'm not even going to bother telling you. But there is an interesting element that you should know. And that is that this chemical does not exist in Riesling grape juice or even in young Riesling wines. Not at all. But what does exist is their building blocks. So what we know is that this smell only begins to emerge over time as these various building blocks eventually combine and trigger this chemical at a threshold that we can smell. So if you smell kerosene on a Riesling, then you know that it's probably had some time in the bottle. The rate at which this chemical can develop changes depending on where it's from, how it was grown. In Germany, it might take 10 years before you even get a hint of that, whereas perhaps something like this one in South Africa, which is only six years old, already is showing some signs of that sort of tertiary age. So that kerosene note is almost always a tertiary note, which means it's a result of time. And while you do get it on one or two other wines, it's pretty distinctly linked to Riesling. But let's see what it tastes like. Oh, that acidity is amazing. So what you have is, it's really quite um, pleasing in that it takes you on a little journey, right? You take the sip and up front, you got the apricot, kind of stone fruit, even a little bit of that more tropical pineapple that just pops up there. But then it kind of segues through into the citrus as this acidity takes on a kind of slow attack uh, quality and builds to a crescendo and then right at the end you've got this lingering kind of almost lemon candy and 
you might say flip hand journey segue like what the hell are you talking about this is why not public transport and i'd say yeah yeah i guess so but this is a good opportunity for you to be able to speak wine douche right because if you ever want to say things like hmm hmm this wine has phenomenal evolution well that's what we're talking about great wines should actually be able to take you on a journey where they change in your mouth from beginning to end so that's what that little bit of wine douche speak means that's pretty much all that we have time for today. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Or better yet, once you've had a taste of this, guys, leave your review on the site. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the Hand Drink Solo Wine channel so that you can keep up to date with rising star winemakers, as well as unusual cultivars and exciting new regions that are starting to produce wines that could in the future completely change how the world sees South African wine. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.